In this video, I'm going to show you about lists in Python. Lists are a very important data type. In fact, they are almost a fundamental building block of Python. What you're looking at on the screen is the spider IDE. And before we begin with the actual Python code, I want to define a little bit of terminology. So I'm showing you an Excel worksheet that I've created to help me define a few things. And uh, the first thing I wanted to define is what a vector is. A vector is a column of like things. So I've got three examples here. The first vector I've called x, and it contains five integers. So a vector has the following properties. It has a single index, so if I talk about x1 and 2 and so on, it's going to refer into the vector. It has a length, in this case 5, and it has a data type, which in this case is integer. Next, I have defined another vector, y, of floats, or real numbers. So this also has a type, which is of real or float, a length 5, and of course you index it with a single index. So that's a, a vector of real numbers. The last vector, z, is a vector of strings. It contains things like dog, cat, horse, and so on. So again, it has a length, which is 5 in this case, and it has a uh, data type, which would be string. Now, in addition to vectors, uh, we are often interested in matrices. And what a matrix is, is it's a table or a two-dimensional array of like things. And I've just given one example here. Uh, this is a 5 by 4 matrix of real numbers or floats. So I've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 rows, and then 4 columns, 1, 2, 3, 4 columns. And the kind of number that's in it is a, is a regular decimal number or a float, a real number. So a matrix has a number of rows, in this case 5, a number of columns, in this case 4, and by convention we talk rows first and then columns. So if I say a 5 by 4 matrix, it has 5 rows, 4 columns. And it also has a data type, which in this case is float, but I could construct matrices of strings and so on. Now it turns out that Python, unless you uh, add in additional uh, stuff, does not have an idea of either a vector or a matrix. What it does have an idea of is a list. And a list is a lot like a vector, except that the things in the list don't have to be of the same type. So here I've defined here a list, w, and it's going to contain a string dog, an integer 3, a floating point number 7.123, a string house, and here I've put in sign of x, because a list really can contain anything that is defined in the language, and it can in particular include functions. So I've returned to the spider IDE, and I'm going to show you how to create a list. Lists are created using square brackets, and then you just list out the items that you want in the list separated by commas. So uh, our list is going to consist of the string dog, the integer 3, the floating point number 7.123, the string house, and that's all I'm going to put in this list. So this will create a list, and for example, I can go ahead and execute it in the interpreter here. So let me select it, and then press F9. And you can see that it shows me that I have um, this list. And in fact, uh, when you uh, talk about the type of things in uh, Python, um, it is this square bracket that indicates that it's a list. Now I can also, of course, assign lists to variable names. So now I'm going to let x be this list. So let me go ahead and execute this. So that's with F9 again once I select it. And now you'll see that I have uh, a variable called x which uh, uh, points to this list. So if I type x, I get the list back. Now lists are indexed in exactly the same way that strings are. So you already know how to index lists, but let's uh, just play with this a little bit to make sure. 
lists then are indexed starting at zero. So in this particular case, x0 should return the item, the string dog, and x1 should return the second item, which is the integer three. Lists can also be indexed with negative numbers. x uh, of minus one is going to give me the very last item, house, and x minus two is going to give me the uh, second to last item, which in this case is the number 7.123. Okay, so indexing works exactly like strings. You might want to review the uh, tutorial on strings uh, if you've forgotten about the indexing. Slices also work exactly the same way. So if I want a slice that consists of 3 and 7.123, what I will do is I will type x, uh, open bracket, and then I'm going to put in the index of the first thing that I want. And the slice will go up to 1 before the index of the last thing. So the index of the last thing here is 0, 1, 2, 3. So the slice and the slice operator, I just typed it wrong, is the colon. So if I go 1 to 3, what I should get out here is the integer 3 and the floating point number 7.123. So there it is. So lists are really very simple. Uh, they can consist of mixed data types. Um, they're like a vector. You should think about it as a column, but instead of everything being the same, uh, it can be different. And you index them in, in the same fashion that indexes work throughout Python, which I've already shown you when I showed you about strings. Now lists may have an unexpected behavior, and I need to show you what that is so that you uh, don't uh, create bugs or can understand how code works. Here again we have the list x. Now let's suppose I say that y is equal to x. Okay, so y is now equal to x and not surprisingly if I type y you'll see that I get exactly the same list. Now what happens though if I take a list element like uh, for example the the uh, third one, which is at index number two. So this is pointing to this number 7.123. And let me change it to something else. Okay, so I just assigned the third element in this list, the string hello. So let's make sure that really happened. So sure enough, the 7.123 is now hello. What's going to happen with y? Well, if I type y, what I'm going to see is that the third element is also changed in the list y. So what's really happened here when I've created my list over here is that x actually is a pointer to this list. So the list exists out in memory and x points to it in the same way that uh, GPS coordinates uh, uh, point to a certain place, latitude and longitude. When I typed over here y equals x, what I've done is copy into y the same address that was in x. And so now y is pointing to this list that's stored somewhere in memory. So when I change the third element here to hello, it's also, it's changed in that place where this list is stored in memory. And so when I type out y, I'm going to get exactly what we saw. I'm going to get the same list that x is pointing to, and the third element is going to be changed to hello. So you need to be careful about doing assignments. y equals x does not produce a copy of the list. Now let's suppose I did want to produce a copy of the list. Okay, so here's my list x. I'm going to go ahead and leave the third element here as a hello. And now I'm going to create a copy of this list. Well, I can do this with the list function. So if I say y is equal to list of x, what Python is doing now is making an entirely new list in memory and then making y point to it. So now if I type y at this point, I should get exactly the same list as x. So you can see that's the case. They are exactly identical. But now if I change the third element of x, 
Okay, the third element of x is at index number 2. Let's change it back to our original floating point number, which was 7.123. So now if I type x, I'm going to see that this third element is a float. Now did y change? And the answer is no, it does not. y remains with the third element as uh, a hello. So this shows you a behavior of lists that you may not um, expect and it can cause problems when you're writing code and when you're trying to understand uh, exactly what code does. Now as I have created my example I've shown you a couple of things without uh, even really saying it. Uh, and the first one is that the way you index in Python is with the square bracket. So for example x3 since we start indexing at 0, x3 gives me the fourth element that ought to be the word house. Okay, We do not use round brackets to index. If I do this, I'm going to get an error message. And it tells me that this is a list object and it's not callable, which means it can't be treated as a function. So the square brackets are the way you index uh, you retrieve in uh, uh, the item of a list. So that, that's how you index, is with the, with the square brackets. Um, what happens now if I index out of range? So if I do x, for example, 4, uh, x4 would refer to the fifth element in the list, and as you can see, there is no fifth element right here. So if I do that, I'm going to get an error message that says the list index is out of range. Okay, uh, let me print the list x again so you can see it. I also, in passing, showed that uh, indexing can be used for lists not only to retrieve the values, but also to assign them. So what I had done before is I had said x2, which points to the third member of this list, uh, is going to be, and I changed it to hello before, so let me just go ahead and repeat that. And so indexing in this way for lists allows me to assign values in the list. So what we've seen here is that lists can be changed. And if you recall back to strings, uh, that was not the case in strings. Lists are changeable, which in the language of Python, it's referred to as they're mutable. So I'll just type this in here with a, a comment. Lists are mutable which means they're changeable. Okay, what we found before is that if I have a string, which I'll call s, okay, so I'll make the, just the string hello, okay, um, I can refer to the various characters in the string. So for example, if I want to get the e, the e will be at index number one. There it is. But I can't change that e to something else. Like I can't change it to B, for example, because the string object does not support assignment. The string object cannot be changed, as I said in the previous uh, tutorial. So strings in Python are immutable. They cannot be changed. And you'll run into this terminology uh, fairly often in Python. Certain things can be changed and certain things can't and things that can be changed are called mutable, and things that cannot be changed are called immutable. Now I want to show you one other thing here about strings, is that you can convert a string to a list by just using the list function. So uh, just to remind you of what's rolled off the screen here, my string s is hello. And now what happens if I say list of s? Well what I'm going to get now is a list formed by the individual characters of the string hello. Okay, So that's kind of a, an interesting way to go from a string to a list. I can't go back the other way, however. I can't do um, string of my list of hello, list rather of s. So we know this in, inside function list of s is going to be a list with these individual letters. If I do string of list of s, I do not get the word hello. So I'm going to wrap up this first video on lists at this point, and I'm going to follow up with another video that will illustrate a few of the other features of lists in Python.
As I said earlier, lists are a very important idea in Python, and they are central to understanding Python programs.